Hi friends, welcome back again. My name is Katie and this is Rouse Rising, my little YouTube channel on the internet where I share with you nourishing family traditions, delicious meals made from scratch, and prepping my pantry, food storage, all the good stuff because everybody's got to eat, right? So that's what we share here is a lot of food, a lot of goodness, and a little bit of lifestyle. Today's video, we are doing a little bit of a pantry restock. I found a video that I forgot to put in my last pantry restock. So we're going to go ahead and add that to today's video. And we're also going to be making chili from scratch and fresh milled cornbread. Oh yes, it is the most delicious cornbread you've ever tried. And if you want to get a mill, Right now, Nutramill is having a bundle sale and I'm gonna leave all of that information down below in this video's description. So if you are looking for a Bosch mixer or a Nutramill grain mill to mill your own grains at home so that you can be a healthier version of yourself with fresh whole foods, then definitely check out the links in this video's description. It costs nothing extra for you to use my affiliate links. You get a mega sale deal and it helps support my channel. I appreciate it so much. Thanks for taking the time to check out the Bosch and Nutramil sale. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. We love to chat in the comments. Yes, we do. We have the best YouTube community here at Rouse Rising, and I would love for you to be a part of that family. So make sure you click subscribe, click the notification bell so that you get notified when I upload videos. I upload about two to three videos a week. Yes, we do. We are busy around here and I share it all with you on this channel. And without further ado, let's dive right into this video. A new place, a new home. For a while, let me feel alive Nothing to hold me back Take my time, just enjoy the ride I know man, passing by Life is good, best I've ever felt Get me up, so in it On this day, I am restocking my flowers. Right there is my bread flour, and then I'm also going to restock my all-purpose flour. I go through about 15 to 20 pounds of each a month, so it's about 40 pounds of flour that my family goes through because we make bread. I also have wheat berries to mill flour I can make fresh milled flour here at home. I choose to save those and keep those stored because they can store for up to an over 50 years if you store them properly. And you can grow wheat from these wheat berries. You can grow your own wheat. So if there is an issue with a shortage, um, I know that I have enough wheat to get me through a season to grow wheat. So about a year's worth of wheat. And then we can also hopefully produce wheat if there was an issue with that and we could you know, be more sustainable that way. So I buy milled flour from Azure Standard. It's easier for me. It takes one step out of my daily loaf of bread. And then I also mill flour for certain recipes. And when I'm feeling frisky, we break out the mill, just like we're gonna do later on in this video when we make our cornbread. I'm gonna show you guys milling my corn for that. Restocking our raisins and craisins right now. I have apple juice infused cranberries that are dried, and then I also have the Thompson raisins from Azure Standard, and that is where I get all my dried fruit. We're also going to be restocking mango, and I buy the 10 pound bags of mango strips, and then each of those other bags, those are 10 pound bags of the cranberries and raisins. This is the ancient grain amaranth, and we use this like a hot cereal breakfast, and it's really tasty. We got this bag from Azure Standard.
we're gonna do is plug in our Instant Pot, and I'm gonna go to the saute feature first. And because I'm a boss with my lard, um, we're gonna add some lard that I canned up and froze. Well, I don't know when I did this. This claims I did it last year, 12, 9, 21, and it's been in the freezer ever since then. So that's the last time I rendered lard. lard. And what do you know? This is my last jar that I could find, and it's time for me to render more lard. So we'll be doing that this month. Click subscribe, stick around. I'd love to have you a part of the Rouse Rising family. And we will then render some lard together. We will cook from scratch together. Today we're just gonna make some good old fashioned, good old fashioned chili. Now everybody makes their chili pretty much the same, maybe slightly different. I'm gonna add a little bit of celery to this, but uh, my family, you know, standard chili how we do it here and I call it making it from scratch I didn't grow the tomatoes so if you want an easy easy <clears throat> recipe that's sure to please everyone you really can't go wrong with chili it's not something that you can easily mess up um, just, you're not gonna mess it up so I'm gonna set aside some peppers because my kiddos We'll want a little bit, and then the rest we are going to chop up. So this is this is actually going to be dinner for my kids. And Aaron and I typically try to eat a carnivore-based diet, and a lot of this is a no-no in that diet and causes us terrible inflammation. If I were to eat this tonight, my body would hurt really bad for the next few days. My fingers would swell. I'll wake up with swollen, puffy eyes. Um, typically, it's if I use a chili seasoning packet that happens. Uh, and But when I make it mostly from scratch, but I still get the pain, the inflammation from the peppers. And the kids love it, and they eat it. And it's a good way for me to get vegetables in their diet. So we're going to get these going, we're going to get these onions going, <clears throat> and yeah. And for our chili, these are the basic requirements for your chili. These are the basic ingredients. You can feel free to jazz it up and add extra veggies if you want to. This is how I make it, and when I have extra zucchini or squash or whatever that I can throw into my foods, I will cram in veggies and things wherever I can. So let's get to it. Up, we're going to be crushing some garlic. I like as much garlic as I can possibly get, especially right now during sick season, so we might as well just use up all of this. It might be too much, but my kids need it. Oh, been sick. So we're going to do it up big with the garlic. I've actually been eating garlic. I uh, just chop it up and douse it in honey and chew it. I chew it really good to get it mixed with saliva. And then I swallow it, um, let it coat my throat really good because I'm battling a ear, nose, and throat infection.
Okay, we're gonna start seasoning this a little bit. We're gonna add some salt. You're gonna add some chili powder. This is just the meat, you know? So we're just cooking up our meat right now. We're still browning it, but we're gonna go ahead and throw the spices in too so that they can get aromatic. All that other stuff. Right, and that's some taste to taste the stiff. So I'm gonna do about a tablespoon of chili powder. I'll say that about do it. That'll do it. Let's do do you guys like smoked paprika? It's good. If you can handle inflammatories. <laughs> Kids are young enough they can they can have things like this once you start to get old like me and daddy over here. All these old motocross injuries start popping up. We're gonna do just a smidge of Chipotle. Just a smidge. Maybe a smidge more. Probably gonna do some coriander. We need cumin. I don't know where the cumin went. Some coriander. Typically I would do some Italian seasoning, but because instead of tomato sauce, I'm going to be adding some marinara sauce. It has some Italian seasoning in it already. We're also going to do some iced cream tomatoes and chilies. Actually, I might omit that. If I can find some like regular crushed tomatoes, but I think I'm out. I think I need to go and stock up this month on my crushed or chopped tomato stash. Pinto beans. These pinto beans I canned up um, in May. Was that? Yeah. So, anyways, we're gonna attempt to get all of these in there. These cans I packed full, and the beans expanded a lot. If you guys want to know how I can my beans, I have a video on that. Can a bunch of beans at once. Did a whole bean extravaganza type deal. All right, so we gotta get these mixed in there. Get all this mixed up, and sometimes I'll add some broth. So I might have to here in a minute. I actually have some turkey broth left over from Thanksgiving. So I made meat broth and bone broth. And um, so this is some bone broth from that. Just enough to let this be a little bit more juicy okay some people like really thick see it's still really really thick um, and as it cooks it will thicken up so we're just gonna let this simmer right here and if I need to add some more broth to it in just a little bit we'll add more broth right now I think that's good I'll have the kids taste it when they get home and let me know if I need to add anything else to it and we're gonna make some cornbread to go along with it making sure I keep this open so it vents and then it's just going to slow cook for a little while. Okay, so it turns out I am going to add some more, the rest of this broth. Okay, I'm going to probably add some water and swish it around in there. And then I'm going to add some red lentils because I want to beef this up just a little bit, make it a little bit more substantial. So we've got some organic red lentils here. And I'll just toss those in on top so that they can cook in that broth and make a little bit more chili for the kids. This cornbread recipe is courtesy of Felicia over at Grains and Grit. I will leave this recipe linked 
down below in this video's description. I'm also gonna sift in the baking powder and baking soda. And it tells me that I need a half a teaspoon. I'm gonna do more than that though. So I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of salt. I'm also gonna add a couple spoonfuls of sugar because why? I can, that's why. I'm gonna throw some sugar in there. We're also gonna do um, four teaspoons of baking powder and then baking powder. I thought I had to do baking. Anyways, we're gonna do four of these. One, two, three. Make sure it's non aluminum. You don't need that in your pot of tea. And then we're gonna do milk, egg, and oil in a minute, but for right now, it says half a cup of sugar. Anyway, do as much sugar as you want. I think I probably only did a quarter of a cup. I'm gonna put some lard into this pan and then throw it in the oven and get it going so that we can throw our cornbread in it next. Get that fried up real good in there. Continue making the cornbread. See back here we got some leftover bread from the other day. I also have bread in my bread machine that I made this morning for the kids' school lunches. We're gonna give this a little mix right here. And then to this, we're gonna crack an egg. We're going to do about a quarter cup of oil. Oil, so we're going to do one, two, three, four. It's about a quarter cup, I would say. And then we're going to do one and a half cups of milk. I'm going to be using unsweetened almond milk. my daily loaf of bread. I'm not sure what happens. Sometimes I don't know what I do. Who knows what I do. Sometimes I don't measure all the ingredients correctly and it does this. Um, it's probably because I needed a little bit more flour in it. Yeah. So it caved in, but that's okay because it gives the kids Mickey Mouse or not Mickey Mouse. It gives the kids kitty cat ears. Because when I slice into it this way, it goes doo, 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 and it looks like a key cat sandwich. So they like it. You know, make do with what you got. And if it turns out funky like this and it's not perfectly round, yesterday's or two days ago I made a loaf and it was nice and pretty and round. But alas, it's not always perfect. That's okay, it's edible, it's delicious. Voila! Didn't even stick, y'all. Didn't even stick. That's gonna come right out of there. It's gonna be real tasty for dinner tonight along with our chili. We'll also have some leftover rice, or the kids will. They'll have some leftover rice, some leftover for this, some chili. We have some sauerkraut, and that's dinner tonight. Bon appetito. And this is what Aaron and I had. We've got some ground beef 
with salt as seasoning with some cranberry sauce and some fried eggs gooey in the middle because that's how we like it we had the same thing for breakfast but our eggs were scrambled so we keep it simple around here with our autoimmune issues thank you so much for watching until next time you guys bye